I know that sounds like a very unusual idea. How is it possible that a rose can grow in concrete? And for any of you who follow the music of Tupac, that's actually a lyric from his song, so I'm guessing that's why some of you are laughing. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nina Thomas, and I realize there's a lot of new people here. I'm a teacher, high school teacher specifically, and I want to start off today with a decision game. So if the slideshow is working. Okay. So it looks like the slideshow's not working, so I'm going to move on without the decision game because you kind of need that visual there. But today, during our time in worship, and every single moment of our lives, we are always planting seeds. We are always, even when you're sitting in, in the rows right now, our decision whether or not to submit that time to God or to allow ourselves to be distracted, we are sowing a seed in that moment. And each, okay, it looks like it is working. And each time we are sowing a seed, we will later reap a harvest. So let's go to, I actually have this working, let's see. So you already know, but each of these moments you will be sowing a seed with a decision that you make. Okay, do you want tea or coffee? Coffee, coffee. lots of coffee people. Okay, do you want chicken tikka or chicken parm? Okay. That's a very real question for a lot of us every Sunday. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit harder. Those moments, those are not big decisions. Those won't really change your life that much. But now, um, are you going to read a book or watch AsianNet slash Netflix? If we're being honest with ourselves, I think a lot of us would have both, both. Yeah, some of us would multitask. He's going to read the Bible and also watch TV. Um, are you going to schedule, do some work, or are you going to, um, are you going to exercise? Some people are saying, I'll do some work. Okay, are you going to read the Bible or are you going to sleep? Read the Bible while you sleep. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to gossip or are you going to stop gossiping? Oh, we're all so noble right now. <laughs> okay, um, so like I mentioned in the beginning, each decision that you make, a lot of times it's a small thing, sometimes it doesn't really matter, but other times each decision that we're making is sowing a seed, whether it's good or bad. And Jesus told parables, these are stories, and this was his way to teach us bigger messages. And when we look at the parable of the sower, it teaches us a very important message. So let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 13 and look at verses 3 through 9. Then he told them as many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where they produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Amen. Different moments, different times in our lives, we can experience different things. And that all impacts the seed that God may be sowing in our lives. Or the, or the decisions we're making, we're sowing certain seeds that we want to grow. But depending on our actions in those moments, those seeds will either flourish or die. So the first question I want to ask is, what seeds are we planting? Because just as we can plant good seeds that lead to growth and amazing things in our lives, we can also be planting bad habits and bad decisions as well. So the book of Joshua tells us stories of people who either trusted in God or didn't trust in God. And early on in their faith journey, we see that they're planting a seed of either faith in Jesus and what he can do or a lack of faith in God. But when we look at Caleb, somebody that we've heard over and over again, he was someone who planted a seed of trust early in the book of Numbers. Again, let's look at Numbers 13, 27 through 30. Um, when we look over here, we see that Caleb told the people to be quiet and listen to Moses. Caleb said, let's go now and take possession of the land. We should be more than able to conquer it. So in a moment where many people were thinking, 
how can God provide? How can we do this? How can we conquer this place? Caleb is planting a seed in Numbers. Amen. In the book of Numbers, he's already planting a seed of I'm going to trust in God. Amen. So both Caleb and the people are planting seeds, just two different types of seeds. And just like these people, we have a decision. Even in my own life, um, when I was younger, I used to, and even now still, I really struggle with negativity. I can think of a situation and just think of all the bad things that can happen. But when you plant a seed of negativity and you continue to water that, you could see the negative impact on your life. But the same thing goes when you, when you plant a seed of positivity and trusting God, you can see a, a, a plant that will grow from that. Um, so you may plant a seed by being kind to your coworker or boss who's been unkind to you. Are you going to choose to be kind to that person who doesn't deserve it? Or are you going to be mean to them? In that moment, you are also planting a seed. You plant a seed each time you decide to come to church. Maybe you don't want to come. Maybe you want to stay at home and just relax. But when you come here today, you're planting a seed. And each day, the people of Joshua marched around Jericho. And in that moment, they were also planting a seed. Joshua 6, 2-3 reads, The Lord said to Joshua, With my help, you and your army will defeat the king of Jericho, and his army and you will capture the town. Here's how we'll do it. March slowly around Jericho, Jericho once a day for six days. So sometimes the sowing of the seed can be the easy part. It's whenever you are starting something new, it's, it's exciting. The first time you go to church, the first time you start a new project, you are excited to just plant that seed. But the hard part can be guarding that seed and to keep praying those prayers that you've been waiting for some time for. To keep praying and trusting that God will provide even when you are experiencing trials. And sometimes the small trials are the hardest. So each day, um, the people of Joshua March on Jericho, they were planting a seed each and every time that they planted. Sometimes the small trials will be the hardest. Those are the moments where you feel like you really can't handle what's happening. And so I, I'm gonna like expose my mom for a second, <laughs> but um, I will come home on the weekends and I'm naturally really messy. So um, last week, unfortunately this wasn't too long ago, I came in and I accidentally knocked over like all of her stuff <laughs> in her bathroom and I thought I put everything back. I just put it back like whatever way and then I left. And then um, a few days passed and she's like, what's happening? Like, where, where's this eyeliner and where's this brush? And it, she literally was like, what happened? I know I put, she puts everything very particularly in a spot and I had come and just like totally messed everything up. And then I told her like, oh, this was me. I did this. And she took a moment. She was like, Lord Jesus. Please give me the strength to do with this girl today. But you know what? I think some moments in our lives, we need to ask God for prayer. We need to say, like, Lord Jesus, I need a moment when my boss is acting a certain way I don't like. Or there are moments where you're like, Lord Jesus, you know, I need help right now to do this thing. And that can be a small thing, like, you go to work and then there's a stain on your shirt and you're just wondering, like, how am I going to function today? Or you're staying late at work and you just want to go home and you feel like you can't handle anymore. Or maybe you're like me and like a student throws things at you randomly during the <laughs> lesson and you're choosing, am I going to be kind to this person in this moment and sow a seed that, you know what, um, my Christian teacher is somebody who is loving and forgiving. Or for me, I broke my LCD screen, you break your laptop, are you still going to persevere and trust in God and choose patience in those moments? And the reason why I point this out is it sounds really small, but the worries of our lives can choke a good plant that you are growing. Okay. Those worries, those it's moments small. in your life, it sounds like a very tiny thing, but maybe you were spending time with God and you let that time, you spent too much time at work and you say, you know what, I'm just gonna skip tonight, I'm not gonna pray tonight. And then you will start to see that plant die. Very when small. you are not spending time planting it, growing it, and helping it become stronger. In Joshua 13, 27 to 28, we see that the people will were told to conquer, but they were instead worried about their opponents. So worry seems like a very small thing in our lives, but worry has the ability to choke out a plant of hope in our lives. And in Joshua 13, 27 through 28, it says, 
This is what they report to Moses. We went to the land where you sent us. It was really a land flow with milk and honey. Here's some of its fruit. But the people who live there were strong, and the cities have walls that are very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. So in that moment, those people allowed the worries of their lives to choke out a good plant that God had for them. In Joshua, we see that the earlier seeds had a purpose. But the fruits of those labors only came later. Caleb claims a promise from 45 years ago. Do we remember the beginning yeah, and numbers. the numbers? Caleb was planting a seed. He said, I am going to trust in God. And that moment, everyone else was yeah. not. Amen. 45 years later, yeah. he is claiming that seed. Amen. So today, you may be choosing to come to church. And you may not see the, the, the offspring, the fruit of that, that choice. But 45 years later, that may be the moment. Amen. And then we look at Joshua 14, 6 through 11. It says, he has kept me alive for 45 years. Since that time, he said to Moses, while well, Israel moved about the wilderness. So here I am today at 85 years old. I am still as strong today as, I, as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to the battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. Praise God. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He planted a seed. He did something 45 years ago. And he went back and he said, I may be 85, but today I am claiming that promise. Right. And God, God is asking us the same thing. Joshua 6, 15 through 17, um, 17 um, Joshua 6, 15 through 17, verse 20. Let's read that. On the seventh day, the army got up at daybreak. They marched slowly around Jericho, the same, day, same as they had done the past six days. So we're going back to this passage where the people are walking around the walls of Jericho. They went around it seven times, and the priests blew the trumpets, and Joshua yelled, Get ready to shout. The Lord will let you capture this town, but you must destroy it and everything in it to show that it belongs to the Lord. The woman Rahab helped the spies to be sent. So protect her and the others who were inside her house, but kill everyone else in the town. The priests blew their trumpets again, and the soldiers shouted as loud as they could, and the walls of Jericho fell flat. Then the soldiers rushed up the hill, went straight to the town, and captured it. The Lord helped Joshua in everything he did, and Joshua was famous everywhere in Canaan. When looking at the story, um, what stood out to me when I first read it was, how many times do we have a prayer and we stop just a little bit too early? How many times do we go to God and say, Lord, I know that you are going to provide X, Y, or Z. I know that you are going to give me deliverance in something. And we stop before it is time. What, hap what would have happened if those people stopped marching around Jericho after the second time? They march around and they think, okay, nothing's happening. I'm going to stop now. What happens if they stop marching around after the third time or the fourth time or the fifth time or the sixth time? And then they decided that's it. God must not have this for me. Did we stop right before that seventh time? Did you stop right before that time where that anointing and that blessing was going to come in your life? Because those people, those people who are willing to keep marching around Jericho, those people who are willing to keep going and know God told me seven times, I'm going to keep marching seven times. Those are the people who are able to claim that victory. Amen? How many times have you been applying for job after job and you stopped right before that seventh time, that seventh day you stopped applying? How many times have you been looking for solutions in your home and you stopped before that seventh day? The next point I want to make is we look at these people who are walking around um, the, the walls of Jericho. We look at these people who have planted seeds and they aren't able to tend to it so they don't have the fruits of it. But the next point I want to make is you cannot sow a seed that you have never planted. So this is 22-year-old Nina. I'm now 26. And I know like much, I look exactly the same. But um, I moved out of my parents' house at 22. And I needed enough money for a deposit for an apartment. And I remember the exact amount because it was traumatizing. I didn't have the money. It was $1,432. And that was it. Just... 
dollars. And my parents told me they were teaching me a lesson. Um, I, I asked them for the money, and they told me they would give it to me, but they're like, you have to wait because I had a, well, I don't know what's happened, okay. Um, I had an internship experience where I was making like a ton of money. I could have easily saved that amount. I got Starbucks. I was enjoying my life. I was not saving a single penny of that, to be completely honest with you. And when the time came for me to have this money, I didn't have it. And I, I should, I know, I knew I should have saved that money ahead of time, but I didn't. And in that moment, I realized, you know, um, if you have something coming, if you know something is approaching, if you don't prepare for it, it's not going to be there when you need it. Amen. Luckily, my mom was gracious enough to me that she let me the money in time, but maybe there's something that God is planting in you. Maybe God is asking you to do outreach in your community every week, and maybe he was preparing you for something else. But if you say no each and every time, how will you be prepared for that time when it comes? And maybe it's something smaller, like God's asking you to do, you know, like um, talk with somebody new in your church who comes, and you say no, but maybe God was preparing you one day to talk to the President of the United States. Yeah, and God. we're not being faithful with those tiny things, and we're not preparing and planting and sowing those tiny things. So you won't be able to take that plant when you need it because you never planted it to begin with. And the same thing can go when we spend time with God. And I had a moment like this because I recently spoke at a different church and I really struggled. And I wondered, like, why was it so hard for me to come up with a message? Why was it so hard for me to hear a word? And I realized it was because I wasn't taking my personal time with God as important enough. And if you're not doing that, you can't expect to have a message to give to other people unless you are spending time with God oh, and hearing from him yourself. Please but God. recently I looked at old journals and I could see, you know what, like if I spend time with God, I can see all the plants that he has, he has given me, all of the words he's given to me over time. But I can only have that plant if I first sow that seed. If I never plant it, I don't have it when I need it. <coughs> so can we be that rose that grew in concrete? that rose that grows in a situation that seems impossible. This is the lyrics to the poem by Tupac. It says, did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong, it learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. Are we choosing seeds of faith? Are we choosing time with God? Are we choosing God when situations feel hard? Are we choosing God when life's trials seem unbearable? Are you sharing your faith even when it seems like no one cares about what you are saying? John Maxwell says, doing the right thing daily compounds over time. And even in terms of sharing faith, I have a coworker who I did my teaching residency with. And she did not believe in God. She never seemed to like really care that much, but she was dating um, somebody who did believe in God. And we kept in touch over many years, and I always would meet up with her at least once a year. And this past, the past few, like a couple months ago, she messaged me and she asked, like, can we meet up again? And then she told me, like, I don't know if I told you this, but I recently accepted Christ. And I think that God is intentional in everything, and even our friendship was a way that he was kind of building that in me. So maybe you have a friendship and you just choose to say something about God, and maybe that person isn't interested at all, but you may be planting a seed, and maybe yeah. somebody else waters it, maybe yeah. somebody else tends it, but are you willing to just try to, to basically plant? Because you never know the harvest that God has in mind if you are willing to plant that seed of faith in Him today. I want to close by looking at Hosea 10, 12. It says, Sow for yourself righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. Amen. So today my question for you is not how you want your walk with God to be like today, not how you want your life to be like today, but what do you want God to do when you're 85? Do you want to be like Caleb? And do you want to be able to claim a blessing? Amen. If you want to be like him, you need to plant that seed today. Uh, may God bless you with these words. Praise God.